Hey guys, we're out here today. We're going to grease the axles on my RV here. I've got both of them jacked up. I'm jacked up on the frame with a hydraulic jack right here. Uh, it's pretty windy out here. I hope we can do this with my own voice, my own lovely voice. Otherwise, I'll have to do this uh, later and dub it over and it's going to be um, my usual monotone <laughs> voice. <laughs> but uh, now this is what this is the, the part that I was going to tell you that's really really important if you don't want to get your ass in a in a in a bind like I did. When you they tell you to rotate these wheels, most everybody knows that when you grease them, you rotate them. But road the direction that you rotate them in is important because these little zerk, zerk fittings. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah. Here's a little zerk fitting right here. See that little puppy right there? Look at the amount of threads on that fitting. There's not much meat there. So, if you're rotating this thing to where it has the tendency to rotate this way, you're going to be backing it off and that's exactly what I did. So you don't turn these wheels the same direction on both sides of the trailer or you'll get in trouble. So this wheel, I'm going to turn it this way, right? Because that's, that's tightening. And when you start pumping, you form a hydraulic lock against that fitting and it's more or less like having a, uh, a wrench on it. So, you know, as you rotate, you want to, uh, you want to turn it in a direction where it cannot back off on you. That's very key. And you continue to rotate until you get uh, grease out of it. I noticed that this brake right here has been running a little hot. And uh, I can tell why. You can tell the difference. Look how easy this one drives. And look, look how, how difficult this one is. But I'm just pumping a little grease in it here. Just to, uh, just kind of a yearly maintenance thing. Rotating, it just breaks the friction. It doesn't want to really rotate good, but. See, I got grease coming out now. So I know I got grease all the way. Now here's the other thing. The other really important thing to me, that when you take this thing off, you don't just twist it like we used to do on the old cars that was that real good dirt fitting. Because it just doesn't work properly. So what I do is I loosen this thing up. A little bit, bit difficult here because because of the way I got it. But you see, you can see it leaking out, and that breaks the. That just breaks it where you can pull it straight off, and it might be a little messy. I, I'll grant you that. But I tell you what, I twisted one off one day, and with the cheap steels and stuff that you got nowadays, I came out with the fitting. It broke the. The threads off so I'm very careful about pulling these grease guns off of these dirt fittings now just uh, what happened to me I'm 69 years old it's the first time it's ever happened to me you know call it luck but if you if you loosen this up right here well that will break the, the, uh, the suction the pressure it will relieve the pressure and uh, the last one I had set up was set up a little differently where it was easier to do this this is set up for that god dang uh, ram uh, <laughs> u-joint the, the infamous ram u-joint but anyway that's the two things I wanted to show you that, that's really critical to me you know is to first of all rotate this thing 
in the direction that you'll be actually tightening that zerk fitting, not loosening it. So that means on the other side, you're gonna go the other way. And uh, the other thing is don't just take that grease gun and rank that thing off of there when you finish because you may very well end up with that zerk fitting <laughs> on the end of that gun like I did. And now you're talking about tearing everything down. And another little tip too, that I told you this, was, this one was running a little hot. What's really handy is if you go, you get real cheap. They don't have to be really accurate. They just have to be the same. And you go around and you check all four tires every once in a while when you stop, pick up fuel or food or whatever. And uh, it really gives you a good indication as to what how those tires are running. I noticed this one was running tight, and now that I jack it up, I can tell that, uh, I think it's that brake actually. It's gotten looser since I, since I uh, jacked it up. The other thing, the other important thing, is you wanna move your tire this way. See, I have no play at all. So there's no reason to tear this tire down unless you wanted to check the brakes, and I haven't, I haven't really checked, uh, I haven't really used these brakes enough to worry about it. There's one other thing. Uh, if you look on the side of these tires, there's a date that it was made. And uh, it's just a little, kind of a non-obvious looking thing. And uh, these are Westlake tires. Just about every tire you get on an RV is going to be made in China. Uh, but uh, I don't see it offhand, but it's on here somewhere. It's just a little square. And uh, it tells you when it was made. Basically, they want you to change these things every four years, whether they need it or not. So uh, that's the uh, that's the secret. Is every four years. Uh, this one's in the daylight a little better. Maybe I can see it a little better. But uh, these tires are about right. There it is, right there. Four. 4113. 4113 is when these tires were made. So, you know, we're going on, we're at 17, so I'm pushing four, four years on these set of tires right here. And uh, so they're about ready to go. So they look in good shape though, and uh, I'll probably run them some more, but I need to be aware, you know, that uh, it is about time to change them out. So. Anyway, that's a few things I wanted to pass along to you. Uh, hope this is helpful to you. Uh, I hope it saves you some of the hassles that it saved me. Uh, and uh, until next time, adios.